this is fun. So I bought this uh, round carbide insert. It came from this outfit here uh, in Arizona. I think I paid uh, $14 including shipping. And the thing sat on my workbench here for about a month and I finally got around to uh, starting to uh, make this thing. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details of how this is made, but I, I do want to share a couple of design details that I incorporated that I thought maybe uh, others uh, might benefit from. These are things that I haven't seen done elsewhere. So, to start with, uh, I, I decided to go with a, uh, a number 1024 cap screw to attach the bit uh, to the steel here. And so that operates off of a 730 seconds Allen key. And uh, so there's actually going to be two cap screws in the design of this tool. So I decided to also incorporate a place to carry an Allen key uh, on the tool itself. So just to back up a little bit, uh, one of the things that uh, I learned right away was that you really need to have a pretty good rake of the steel that you're supporting this uh, with. Uh, you know, if you put it straight into the wood, uh, it will scrape nicely, but you can also get it to almost cut uh, if you uh, increase the, uh, the angle of attack. And, but to do that, you've got to have a, a nice little uh, angle right in this area here so that uh, you can move the, the, the piece up into the wood at a little bit steeper angle of attack. So <clears throat> there's that. Um, also, a friend suggested that uh, if, uh, if I made this, that I might want to consider uh, making the length of the tool adjustable. So I thought I would just show how I'm going to do that. Uh, this is uh, the wood handle I'm going to be turning on the lathe today. And uh, it's made out of uh, just a couple of pieces of mahogany. These came out of the dumpster and they were an old outdoor table. I thought it was uh, teak, but it turned out it looks like it's mahogany. And then uh, I lamin I'm going to laminate that uh, with a piece of uh, poplar, some kind of a secondary wood. I believe it's poplar here. And uh, I'm leaving this square recess uh, for the uh, shaft of the tool here. And so well, I've drilled uh, holes that are oversized for the 1024 screw uh, to allow for about eight inches worth of adjustment. So normally uh, this will be fully inserted into the tool and uh, when that's done it'll be a couple of inches longer than the largest tool that I have. If you have a large project of some type and you need a lot of reach on your scraping, then things are rolling all over, sorry. Uh, you can uh, pull the pin on this and uh, pull this thing out here. And so the way that this is going to work, uh, just to take this out, I have uh, inset a couple of pieces of brass. These are I'll call them shouldered bushings here. And uh, the way this will work, this is threaded, this is not. This would be the top, this would be the bottom. And so the steel will go inside the slot and uh, the uh, cap screw will go through here and then be threaded into the bottom. And uh, it'll go through a hole here and it'll secure at whatever position uh, that you would like your tool to be for the work that you're doing. Uh, of course, I'll turn the whole thing on the lathe here. Uh, the other design feature that I've incorporated uh, is uh, a place to keep the Allen key. And it's an odd size. It's a 730 second. I don't think I have that uh, in my kits. Maybe I do. I don't know. But I thought it would be smart just to keep one with the tool. So what I've done is I've, I've made a little pocket on the tool. I just drilled a hole in the base of it and I put a notch there so that I can uh, just insert it. It'll stick out just about a quarter of an inch here. And then uh, I glued a neodymium, neodymium, neomedium magnet. Why don't they just call them strong magnets? I put one of these uh, Mother Earth magnets in here, and uh, that'll keep the thing from uh, coming out. So it sticks pretty good, and it's uh, just enough force to, to keep the, uh, the Allen key inside the pocket. All right, this is my glue up here. I'm going to let it sit all night, uh, but um, I put it together uh, with the Allen, or I should say the cap screw, all the way through to the threaded portion on the back side here. And uh, there's the little, you can kind of see the 
the bushing on the other side that's threaded and that's just to be sure that the wood is properly aligned so I pull that out of there and I've been obsessively uh, pulling the tool in and out of here because I want to be make sure that there's not a lot of glue squeeze out on the inside that would uh, prevent the tool from inserting properly uh, but it looks like I did a pretty good job there now I tried to keep the glue sort of on the outside of this so it's not all the way to the interior and so that could affect the uh, strength of this a little bit so I think what I'm going to do when this dries is I'm going to put maybe a half a dozen little dowels in here just to uh, increase the strength of this all right I don't see any glue on this I think we're doing okay all right so next day here the glue up is nice and dry I added these uh, dowels here it'll be interesting to see how they look when they get turned I think they're going to look like ovals uh, but I'm going to use the uh, carbide tool itself to cut this and uh, so it should be interesting I've, I've used it a couple times and I, I know how nicely it cuts so I'm not going to wear you out with this Here's where we ended up. Uh, came out pretty good. I put my uh, aluminum ferrule on there. I still need to uh, epoxy it. The uh, the dowels that I put in, it kind of an interesting effect how, how those came through when I turned them down. I got into the cavity where the dowels actually were. And so they turned out to be these kind of neat little splices. Here, I, I sort of necked it down in the center and I left it a little bit big on the two ends here. But here's where my problems were. Um, this uh, is a piece of mahogany and I was interning it and I got a nasty little uh, piece of tear out right there and I'm not going to turn that down any further because I want this shape and then uh, here where the magnet is um, I got into the, the little cavity where I had installed that so I'm going to do the cardinal sin of uh, just using a little bit of plastic wood filler there and then, uh, then I'll come in when that's dry I'll sand it back and and stain and finish it. Well, this thing made pretty quick work out of turning this oak down. This is a rough cut plank uh, that came out of uh, the neighbor's dumpster. I think that's a uh, oak of some kind and uh, turned it down pretty quickly. Uh, you know, it's not a skew type finish but if you take it nice and slow you can actually get it into a bit of a cutting action on it so I'm gonna have to practice with that but uh, this guy is pretty cool I, I'm very happy with how this thing turned out here uh, it feels good I, I don't like the little allen key sticking out in the back so I think I'm gonna take and notch this and turn it so it goes back this way so that's one thing I will do and uh, next time I make one of these, uh, the rare earth magnet, I'll be mindful of where I place that so that I don't expose it again. But I think it turned out pretty decent. I'm very happy with it and uh, good enough to assign Stewart Arts to it. So that's all for today. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, like, subscribe, and I love your comments. Have a great day.